Thanks for joining us. I'm Nancy Furness, and this is We've Got Issues. We're filming on site today at Coquitlam City Center Library, and we'd like to thank the library for giving us this space to do the interviews. We'd also like to thank Tri-Cities Community Television for filming the interviews. I'd like to acknowledge that these interviews are taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded lands of Coquitlam First Nation. So we thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to care for the lands and the waters and all that lies above and below. So today we're joined with Carla Parr, by Carla Parr Pearson, who is with Tri-Cities Bear Aware. So thank you so much for joining us today, Carla. Thank you so much for having me. I was wondering, can you start us off by telling us a little bit about how you became um, a bear advocate and also a little bit about the uh, Tri-Cities Bear Awareness Group? Oh, sure. Uh, so my bear awareness journey began in 2016 after a mother bear and her three cubs, well, two of her three cubs were destroyed in my community. And uh, I remember uh, seeing this family unit for the very first time in 2015 in fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was a tagged bear. And then the following year in April of the following year, so 2015, we go to 2016. And, and I learned that uh, the mother bear and two of her three cubs were killed for getting into mm -hmm. a garage. And so breaking. Yeah, it was really, you know, upsetting for the community because the, the bears were seen on a lot of video footage shared on social media, you know, playing, frolicking around, and then to learn that they had been destroyed because of human behavior, that was a little upsetting for our community. So that's when I started, uh, that's what motivated me to kind of step into action in my own neighborhood. I started with my own neighborhood and documenting their conflicts, educating my neighbors, and reporting issues. Um, Okay, so doing some monitoring and a little bit of education yes. in there. Yes. How many bears do we have in the Tri-Cities? Do you have any idea? And is the number changing? So uh, that's a really good question. And that's a question for our provincial government. Mm -hmm. But what I can share is a little bit of some stats. Okay. So for example, for the Tri-City area, um, for the bear calls, just to give you an idea. Yeah, so about a year, it's a, like within a year, like so from May to December, um, there's approximately 4,700 calls within the Tri-City area. So wow. that includes Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, and, and Port Moody. And then in BC overall, on average, BC Conservation Officer Services receives uh, on average uh, 22,000 calls per year. So our zone represents, uh, I think, tw roughly 21% of those calls. And just to give you an I idea, um, if you want me to share, I'll share some statistics. Sure. Um, so from the number of bears killed in the Tri-City area, uh, for, so from 2021 to 2023, so in the last two years, right. there were 19 bears uh, killed, okay. uh, 10 in Poco, eight in, in Coquitlam, and one in Port Moody. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot, and I know we see a lot on Facebook about bear, you know, there's a bear here, there's a bear there, don't say anything about the bears. How many, um, you know, when are these calls coming in? Like, when are the bears most active? Throughout the year, I think we see, you can maybe explain a little bit about why we see bears more at sometimes mm -hmm. um, other you know, rather than other times. And also even during the day, are there times when bears are more active? <laughs> so, uh, so bears are most active from April to November. Right. And then in milder climates the like ours, they're, if they're continuously finding food, they may, oh. you know, and we've had a couple of bears, you know, in the last couple of years that, you know, are active all year round. Um, I was out door knocking on December 31st, New Year's Eve, because we, we had an active bear in the area. Wow. Yeah. So some bears are not hibernating in this area. No. No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> um, and the peak, uh, it typically peaks in May and then September. So in May, you have the bears are coming out of hibernation. So they're, you know, they're hungry. And so they're kind of moving around and looking mm -hmm. for, I look, I call it, they're, they're, trying, they're feeding on salad greens. So there isn't much, you know, food available. They're looking a lot of for food. They're looking for mm -hmm. food, you know, because they lost some weight from hibernation. And then you have um, in May the the family unit. So the mm. the, bear, the family the cu the cubs that are born this year, um, they start venturing out with mom. So it gets a little busy. And then 
and then the yearlings get kicked out. So the family oh, okay. dynamic. Okay. So now you've got, you know, family units and then you've got yearlings and, and then the yearlings got, are on their own. Yeah, yeah, they're on their own learning, you know, to navigate mm -hmm. the world. And then we've got mating season. So it starts to pick up. It gets a little crazy for a bit. So we're, you know, busy, you know, educating residents, giving them heads up because it can pick up uh, quite quickly and try and calm things down. And then in the summer, things kind of like calm down because oh. the because the berries are ripening mm -hmm. and so the, and the bears are looking for other high protein foods like you know grubs and larvae and insects and that type of thing and then and then in fall it starts to pick up again because, because they're, they're trying to fatten they're, up yeah, they're entering into okay. hyperphagia excessive eating and so they're so focused uh -huh. on food and uh, trying to gain those calories before they go in the den. So I have a question for you. Yes. Like, how many hamburgers do you think a bear needs to eat in order, like, to equal 20,000 calories? Oh, let me just think. Um, I would say 100? That's about 50, depending on. Oh, okay. Sorry. okay, it depends. <laughs> Are you eating just a regular hamburger from McDonald's or a Big Mac? But that's a lot just of. Just a regular yeah, hamburger. Yeah, just a regular. <laughs> call it, I think it's about 50. Wow. You know, so it's quite a, you know, they need a lot of food to, to pack on. So they have to find this food they, somewhere. They have to find this yeah. food exactly. And so, I mean, typically, and then, you know, when the bears are moving around, they're typically active at dawn and dusk. Like that's the time when we want to avoid not, not just the bears, but the other wildlife. That's typically right. when they're active. However, they can be active all, you know, all day long. So we should always be aware that they're out and about. Be bear aware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what should you do? Like if you're out and you happen to come across a bear or, or let's say a bear is in your own yard, what would you do if if a bear comes into your yard when you're out there, what kind of actions should you take? Well, I'll start with, I always recommend people to learn about the bear ecology and uh, behavior of bears. Mm -hmm. And so to visit Wild Safe BC, because okay. there's a lot of great resources and videos on how to learn about the bear habits. And you said Wild, Wild, Safe, Wild Safe BC, BC. They're the, uh, okay. they are the provincial program for BC and okay. they are the leader in human bear complex. And so they have more in-depth information on mm. on the bear habits and behavior to help us like keep the bear safe and ourselves safe. But you know, the, the basic, like what do you do when you encounter a bear in, in your yard? Well, what I do is I, I stay calm right. and I don't run. Right. And I speak, you know, calmly to the bear and then I back up slowly and if I can, I go inside where where it's you know so you safe avoid that conflict. Avoid that conflict. Okay. And only if it's safe to do so, like when I'm in my house, I'll go to the top floor, open up my window and go, okay, hey bear, it's time for you to leave now. You know, you need... I let my neighbors know first, like mm -hmm. let them know that the bear's in the area in case the kids are in the yard or the dogs are in the yard. And then if I can, if it's safe to do so, then, you know, bring out the pots and pans and make some noise, make some noise. But if mm. it's not safe to do so, just let the bear, like let everyone know that the bear's in the area and, mm. and leave the bear alone. Like let's let okay. the bear like do its thing. And then if you don't want, try to interact don't in any way, interact in any way, like, and it's hard sometimes if you've never seen a bear, I remember when the, the family unit was in my backyard, I was so excited mm. to there and I, I picked up my phone and started taking photos and I went, no, wait a second. I need to let my neighbors know and then you know and then mm -hmm. kind of go through the, the process um when we're on a trail if, if we encounter a bear it's same thing like when well when we're on on hiking on a trail it's always best like to make noise periodically because we're trying to okay. avoid surprising a bear we want we we want to have a, an encounter where it's not a, a surprise encounter so better to let the bear know that you're there ahead of time and what would a bear normally do if they knew that there were people coming and that they heard that noise? Well, typically, I mean, typically bears will flee because, you know, they did evolve in, in the forest. So, you know, they'll flee into right. the forest or they'll climb a tree, you know, to keep themselves safe. But sometimes, you know, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. You surprise a bear and now you've got, a, you know, so I, I remember when my husband and I were um, hiking one day and this is before I was bear aware, we were hiking. It was berry season, August, it was berry season. Right. And all of a sudden a large bear jumped out of a berry bush and he was less than like five meters away. And we stopped. Is he as surprised as you? He was just, just as surprised as us. So my husband goes, what do we do? And I, my, and my instincts just kicked in. I stopped mm -hmm. and I said, we're gonna back up slowly. Yeah. And then the bear moved and then the bear kept 
like checking over it like over his shoulder kind of checking me out to see who I am and we're just like so I used my voice hey bear we're backing up now we're giving you space and then he took a couple more looks and then he went the opposite way and then we we rerouted we went a completely different way so that we could give the boy boy <laughs> well he wasn't a, big a boy. boy he was a big boy and uh so we gave it lots of space and bears are intelligent right and yeah. and they don't they're not looking for conflict like yeah. humans are not prey yeah. to bears so uh, you know to be fair and give them a heads up yeah and it's just you know, looking for signs like if you see like when we go hiking if we see lots of bear scat right and it's fresh okay we're, and if the, it's dense we kind of leave the area that's and, a really good tip yeah. right and we always carry bear spray and so it's, it's recommended by wild safe bc to mm -hmm. carry bear spray and know how to use it and then if you're hiking in the trails if you have a dog it's recommended to um, leash the dog or at least have the dog have good recall in case you do encounter a bear right. because sometimes it can instigate a kind of ch defensive response by the bear. So, you know, again, we're just trying to avoid these surprising, surprise right. encounters. So now we hear the word habituated and <laughs> normally we see bears that or hopefully we'll see a bear that is, um, you know, surprised maybe but not wanting to interact with people and they will leave yeah um this term habituated what does it mean it's a very good question and i'll start off with a habituated bear is a bear that's lost, lost its natural wariness of humans um so i'm just gonna like pause for a second because i really want to read a quote um that kind of represents habituation and and what like what it kind of means mm -hmm. and so it's a quote that i pulled from the university of uh calgary so i, I don't want to miss anything so i'm going to read it sure. word for yeah. word because it's really important so according to the university of calgary researchers across the globe agree that when wild carnivores spend too much time around people they can become habituated and quickly lose their fear of people and when wildlife are also dependent on human sources of food, they can become food conditioned. Mm -hmm. And it is a well-known scientifically proven fact that habitu habituated food conditioned wild animals of many kinds are more likely to get into conflict with people and pets. Mm -hmm. So for a bear to become uh, habituated, it needs to ha be exposed to humans without negative consequences okay, right so if you're in like say the national park and people are viewing the bears and you know the bears become habituated and because you know there's people in the area for you know photographing them that type of thing and then they go back to doing what they're doing eating natural food sources right. but in an urban environment it tends to be a little bit different because we've got food sources so right. over time when a bear uh becomes comfortable around people um, they typically you know and this typically happens in human use areas where the bears have an easy food reward so in the tri, tri city area right the, the bears are moving around from wildlife corridor to wildlife corridor and when they're moving through if we leave unsecured garbage un unsecured green waste uh, unharvested fruit trees or bird feeders and the bears get into them now we're like they're they're associating associating these areas for easy easy right. meals, and then and if they keep coming to these areas repeatedly mm -hmm. without negative consequences, right? And most of us are sleeping when the bears are getting right. into some of these attractions, then they become persistent, and they okay. and they and they can uh, break into structures like create uh, property damage. And um, for example, last year we had a bear uh, that was in the community in Anmore and Port Moody. And right. during the fall, it started targeting um, homes that had garages and breaking into the garages. And then it kind of went into hibernation and then came out and started targeting the mm -hmm. same homes again. So it knew that where the food so source was. Where the food source was and everyone was storing their carts inside the garage, but it only takes one incident where a bear gets Food, like 
outside uh, the you know the house and then you know so will a bear come back to the same place just after one time of getting yes i i have observed it over and over again in my community where I, I mean this was a while ago a bear came in our community and got into garbage and then the following week it came back on the same day mm -hmm. same time Right, so it's got a schedule. Yeah, it's got a schedule, and they, they learn very quick. They have a memory map, they remember everything, and they have re really good problem solving skills too. Like, they learn how to breach those carts when they're equipped with those clips. They're, you know, their claws right. are sharp, you know, they feel it open. They can bend back yeah. the lid if you just have yeah. the one. And so, the bear stopped coming back once uh, the property changed its habits. So, they started storing their carts inside. So, that's a little bit of good news. So, if you've had a a bear come and get into your garbage and then you say, well, I don't want this to happen again. You secure your garbage, you make sure that it's not accessible to a bear, then that bear will not come back again, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I mean, the first, like, what we always recommend to residents and the municipality, so the messaging is, is all the same, so it's, not, it's nothing new. But we, bears have an incredible sense of smell. So seven mm -hmm. times, um, than a bloodhound and 2,000 times stronger wow. than a human, right? So if I can smell it, if I can smell the garbage that's in the bin or food right. scraps that are in the green waste bin, the pair can smell it like far away. And so reducing the odors is the first and the, the most important step. And so freezing our food scraps, like right. all the smelling stuff, freezing our food scraps or keeping them in the fridge until collection day, rinsing our carts, uh, regularly i've seen bears where they the bin is empty it's clipped properly and the bin is the bear is taking the bin and talking about licking the bin still that trying to get the residuals out of there you know i've watched it spend 40 minutes trying to do this and i'm like oh boy you're you are talking about <laughs> rinsing it out because you want to avoid those attractive yeah. smells is there anything in particular that you would recommend rinsing or washing the bin out you can with? Just use like regular vinegar, you oh, know, vinegar? to rinse okay. it out. So, you know, um, and you can contact your municipality to find out, you know, what you can and can't use. But just simple, you know, uh, vinegar. Mm -hmm. And some people will use pine salt and spray the outside mm -hmm. and the inside. You know, whatever residents, you know, will try different things. And the bear's gonna let you know what you need to do. So, mm -hmm. so if the bear keeps coming to your cart, the bear's trying to tell you. You need to. I'm need still to change, attracted. Need to yeah. change something, and you know, and and there are some barriers for some residents. So they may they may not have a place to store their carts inside because they don't have a garage. Right. Uh, so you know, always that's the best option. But there's other things that we can do um, to prevent the bear from getting into our carts and tipping them over, right. and you know, trying to secure them to a robust uh, structure. Okay. So make sure they don't have that smell, that food attractant smell, secure them, and also to secure them so they can't be tipped over either inside somewhere or attached. Yeah, somewhere. and, and okay. buying or building uh, a shed that a bear can't get into, and it needs to be okay. anchored to the ground. And there's still some extra steps we still need to do, even if we put them in the shed, we still need to clip our carts. Right. We still you know, need to anchor them in some way, just in case, because mm. bears are very strong, and, and, if, and they're persistent if there's something mm, and smart so, so they can put that strength and that yeah. intelligence together and, yeah okay no that's really good to know i think you've given us some great tips um we see so many you know reports of bears on facebook and social media and some people say um don't put those notifications on there because the bear will be killed mm -hmm. other people say no it's important for people to know where the bears are moving and it's for information only so can you tell us a little bit about what happens when a bear is actually reported to a conservation officer? Like what, maybe give us a couple of scenarios of what could So happen. I have a couple of scenarios. So first, when, when someone calls the, the BC Conservation Officer Services, that call is, mm -hmm. is protecting the bear and protecting people. It's helping, yeah, helping oh, okay. to keep the bear and people safe. And so the purpose of reporting, um, so we're sharing information and that information is shared with the municipal partners and the, the NGOs that the BC conservation officers uh, work with to reduce okay. human bear conflict. So it's information, getting information out. Yeah, it's getting it, yeah, getting information out. It's getting education and sometimes an enforcement in an area where, where uh, the calls are showing a, a hot spot. 
And then that data, we use that data to uh, plant, do seasonal planning, to, to look at the trends of where the conflicts are happening. Um, do we need to make some changes in education, signage, you know, that type of thing. I mean, there was an incident, um, not an incident, but there was um, a, several weeks ago in a, in a community where someone called COS because a bear was getting into garbage. Right. And then they contacted their partners, the municipality and, and ourselves. And we were able to deploy um, the education, go out and start door knocking and talking to residents. And then the city deployed a bear in area sign. Right. And after that, things changed, the bears moved on because we were able to fix, reduce the, the, the conflict so very you quickly. Prevented you prevented a potential Yeah, issue not there. All prevented, that mm -hmm. prevented it from escalating, you know, further. So now the bears are, they're, they're, they're moving through because everything got corrected and, you know, and it happens, right? Well, thank you for kind of clarifying that a little bit because it's, you know, some people, people get very passionate about bears in the Tri-Cities and, yes. you know, it's nice to have some really solid guidance on what to do and, and what's happening when you do take those actions. And another um, question that I think people are very unclear about, do bears get euthanized um, on a regular basis or is that an exceptional case? Do bears get relocated? Can you tell us a little bit about what happens after that call to the bear? Well, I, I so that's probably a, an, a question for Conservation Officer Services, but okay. um, when you make that call, it does, so a routine sighting, mm -hmm. the isn't gonna come out and for a routine, it's sighting. It's right. like their main goal is public safety. So if it's a public public safety issue, right. so only uh, it depends. If the bear doesn't have a conflict history, then mm -hmm. the bear may get relocated. But that's really a like a you know, conservation yeah, officer yeah, decision. That, yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, and they only they know they have a, only they know um, the bear's behave like habits that right. are going on in the community based on the call volume. Okay. And you know, it's really that's they manage the bear population. The municipalities manage the solid waste. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Then, okay. So and then we're, and then the humans are supposed to manage <laughs> their, their attractants. Yeah. Um, so you were talking about bringing the city in and, and stuff. Um, there are regulations through the city, like to secure your garbage and um, things like that to keep the bears safe. Do you have any idea how many people are actually complying with those regulations? And is it changing again? Are we seeing more compliance or can you give us a sense of about that? So compliance rates do vary, uh, but uh, with increased education and enforcement, mm -hmm. there it, we do see improvement. And so the data kind of shows us, for example, Coquitlam, when they did their solid waste uh, curbside audit in 2021, right? It showed a 99% compliance rate wow. since 2017 when they implemented, you know, the, the curbside collection. It's actually pretty impressive. Uh, it is very impressive. And then for uh, Port Moody, since 2016, the total number of citations under the solid waste bylaw has decreased by 82 percent okay so education is yeah education is. yeah education is key and it's very rare like after the first so so education happens and then and then the fine is 500 dollars right so, 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 so all of Co so all of the tri-cities coquitlam coquitlam and port moody the the first fine offense is uh, $500. Port Moody is a little different or is go, they escalate a little higher, but it usually stops at 500 because that, that's expensive. It is. You <laughs> don't want to get hit by too many $500 fines. No. When the, you know, the um, power to deal with it is in your own hands, yes. right? Yes. So um, now, Port Moody recently became a bear smart city, yes, which congratulations, because I think there was a lot of people put a lot of hard work into that. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about what is a bear smart city and what goes into, you know, getting that status? So I'll start with uh, becoming a bear smart community designated by the province is, is challenging mm -hmm. and it requires patience, <laughs> perseverance and determination. <laughs> Like many good yeah. things. <laughs> and cooperation at all levels. So right. at the provincial government, so basic conservation office of services, the municipality, and then participate active participation from the community like ourselves, like Tri City Bear, where we represent the community. So Bear Smart community, uh, you have to meet a criteria of six. So the first part 
of the criteria is uh, um, having a bear hazard assessment completed. And that bear hazard assessment gives you the recommendations. Mm -hmm. Well, Port Media had 39 recommendations. You don't have to do them all at once, so you kind of prioritize like which ones are the most important. Right. And then develop a human bear conflict management plan, revising the decision making documents like the community, um, the OCP, the official community right. planning documents, um, implementing an education program, uh, implementing a bear resistant program, which is key. So bear, a solid waste, sorry, a bear resistant solid waste program. That's so securing your garbage. Yeah, so providing bear resistant bins, um, you know, to, to the community and then having bear smart bylaws. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for intentionally and unintentionally feeding wildlife. Right. So that's basically like the, the steps that it, it takes and, and it does take it does take a while because one of the major expenses is the solid waste system. It can cost millions of dollars to, depending on the size of your community, like think about it, Coquitlam is the sixth largest municipality. Right. And then add Poco and, and Port Moody, you know, together. And there's a lot of invest, a lot of resources, mm -hmm. like financial resources, and it does take time. So like for Port Moody, you look at, okay, I'm going to prioritize the bear proof bins. You look at, okay, parks, trails. Right. Yeah. Right. And if you were to walk around Port Moody, you're going to see those bins now at every trailhead, every park and every bus stop because the bears move through, <laughs> move through Moody Center. Mm -hmm. So we have them all over the place. So it sounds like it's not just the citizens, but the city as well is taking responsibility and, and trying to keep the bears safe and securing mm -hmm. garbage wherever they can. Yeah. Well, and, then, and then education. So uh, increasing the educational efforts, because really mm -hmm. like it starts with prevention. Mm -hmm. So education and and um, enforcement, but then having the resources in place so that we can take those steps to yeah. uh, prevent, you know, bears from coming into our community. Yeah, no, I just really want to thank you for all the wonderful work that you've done. I know you've spent many, many hours on this as, on a volunteer basis. So, um, and I'm sure the bears are also very grateful for the good work that you've done. So I'd like to thank you again for coming in and, and hopefully we can touch base again in the future. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me now. It's a pleasure. Uh, well, thank you for joining us. We've been talking to Carla Parv-Pearson with Tri-Cities Bear Awareness. Oh,